So you might be aware that Kamala Harris is giving many interviews this uh, week and it isn't going well for her, like at all. And we don't even need to watch the entire interviews. I'm going to show you one clip from 60 Minutes that, uh, well, when she talks about uh, the um, how she's going to pay for her programs and her policies, and the host asks the question, twice just to make sure that well she answers and well you have to watch this my plan is about saying that when you invest in small businesses you invest in the middle class and you strengthen america's economy small businesses are part of the backbone of america's Mm -hmm. economy you see that see she's doing a couple things here uh, mainly that she is uh you know nodding herself when she is speaking is that she's nodding right there. She's nodding to expect a feedback from the host as in, well, I'm saying this, I'm answering your question, and I hope that you at least give me credit for answering that question. But no, the host says, <laughs> you know what, this is not like this. But, but pardon me, Madam Vice President, I, the, the question was, how are you going to pay for it? Real credit for um, this guy, to repeat the question, because that's something with Kamala Harris interviews. She begins to have this word salad that really makes absolutely zero sense. And what does she answer or how does she answer when the question is repeated? Pay for it. Well, one of the things is I'm going to make sure that the richest among us who can afford it pay their fair share in taxes. You, You know what is that? What happened with her voice that began cracking, uh, she began, well, she had that very long pause, and she had that fluttering of uh, the blinking, right? He, he, she, she was blinking really fast, trying to think on her toes. How doesn't she have an answer, a direct answer to this, that she can, when you rehearse an answer like this, like 20 times, just 20 times, you get the guess of it, and you got it. You just can't repeat that when the question is asked. And well, one of the things I'm going to make sure that one of the things that you make sure, in fact, is that before they ask the question, you talk about the program. You make sure that the question doesn't have to be asked. How are you going to pay for this? And regarding this answer, the richest among us who can afford it pay their fair share in taxes. Uh, you know why this guy has that face? This guy has that face for one uh, simple uh, reason. And it's that um, when we t- talk about the richest, we could say all the billionaires in the United States. Let's say that like, we're talking about all the billionaires. And we say that there are between 700 and 800 billionaires in the United States. And the their total amount of wealth between all those billionaires is around five trillion dollars. But the problem is, that there are two problems in fact, that the entire debt of the United States is 35 trillion dollars. So even if you like, like just reunited all the billionaires in the United States and took away all of their wealth, and not, not just raising their tax, not taking away all of their wealth, you would just make a dent in the United States debt. And just a reminder, that if I remember correctly, every 100 days, every 100 days, around $1 trillion, $1 trillion is added to the United States debt. So you, you, you see that even if you wipe out the entire wealth, of all the billionaires in the United States completely wiped out, it would not make it. It it, it would just work for one year at most. So this is not viable. Everybody who has made the slightest uh, Google search knows that that is not viable. There has to be another way. And yes, you can even take away all the wealth of all the rest of the citizens of the United States, and you will have pretty much like uh, around like $10 trillion. You will have still $25 trillion right now 
to pay for. So it's the size of the state, how much it spends the real problem. And no, Kamala is not answering that. It is not right that teachers and nurses and firefighters are paying a ha higher tax rate than billionaires and the biggest corporations. But, and but, I plan on making that fair. But we're dealing with the real world here. But the we're dealing with the real world in the sense that you have not answered the question. You began to talk about nurses, teachers, and firefighters, which is, by the way, of all the interviews that I have analyzed of Kamala Harris, that is the part that she has repeated so many times that she, well, she says that part with the real ease because, uh, well, that's what she does between uh, being born in a middle-class family and uh, the, the richest paying their fair share and the nurses, teachers, and firefighters. And you remember that in the debate, Tim Walls said that as well. And she was a bit upset and he was a bit dismissive as well as uh, as. Uh, of those professions. I think that I found a bit uh, embarrassing, but uh, what can I tell you? But the you? real world includes... How are you going to get this through Congress? What is that? He doubles down on the question. Okay, you are not going to answer how are you going to pay for it because th there is no answer to that question. You, you cannot ha even approach a logical answer to that question. And, well, okay, then you're going to say that you're going to do this in your own way. How are you going to pass this through Congress? Nice question. Very good question. How are you going to get this through Congress? You know, when you talk quietly with a lot of folks in Congress, they know exactly what I'm talking about. Well, I mean, what, what does she mean when she says when you talk quietly? with uh, members of Congress, like like you, you, you whisper into their ears. It's like you're you are like a, the, the, the Congress whisperer. Is that some kind of Hallmark Channel new series? The Congress whisperer? I, I don't get that. But well, it's I, I don't know why that Congress whispering hasn't worked so far in her own, well, tenure as vice president of the United States. Well, because their constituents know exactly what I'm talking about. Their constituents are those firefighters and teachers and nurses. Over and over again, she just repeats that. This is beyond embarrassing. This is something that I don't know what to tell you. And this is just a clip. We haven't talked talk, talk about the Call Her Daddy podcast. We're going to be talking about that. And, of course, I'm sure that there will be more clips about this 60 Minutes interview and uh, the Stephen Colbert uh, um, interview as well. But so far, this is what we got. When she got, when she has this uh, question repeated to her, she does but, this. But pardon me, Madam Vice President. I, the, the question was, how are you going to pay for it? Well, one of the things is I'm going to make sure that the richest among us who can afford it pay their fair share in taxes. You know how her voice cracks, in, in not in the sense that it cracks, that uh, it, it's, it's like she's nervous and I, I, I don't know, it's like afraid. It's like the, that terror in her voice. I, I cannot help. It's not. I am not cruel, but it's uh, for you know science and research that we are doing this, both for educational and entertainment purposes. I you need to, to listen. Just close your eyes and listen to this. Well, one of the things is I'm going to make sure that the richest among us who can afford it pay their fair share in taxes. <laughs> you see uh, the reaction, but. I would love to know what do you think about this in the comments. Remember to download my 100 free body language tips in the description of this video. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the body language guy. Much love and bliss.